Uh, today we'll be doing a review of the, an unilever spring piston gun out of uh, Spain. It's called Inorica Quick. It's a 22 caliber unilever um, spring piston gun. It's quite a large gun. It is this for over 100 years. So they know a thing or two about making uh, uh, spring guns, air guns. Uh, the model number is actually uh, 44-1C and it was made sometime in February of 2009, so it's about 13 years old. Uh, it's about 45 and a half inches uh, long and uh, it weighs, uh, with open sights, uh, 8.4 pounds. So if you put a, a a small scope on this, you can add another pound and a half to that. So you're looking in the range of about 10 pounds. So it'll be quite a heavy gun. Um, it's very powerful. So this is uh, not, for, not for plinking, but for hunting. Uh, you definitely need to put a sling on it if you're going to walk in the field all day with this. Um, apart from that, the cocking force on this gun is about 50 pounds. Uh, it took me about two hands, both hands, to cock this. Uh, but what is confusing about it, even though it, it is not considered a magnum springer, uh, it's only rated at around 15 foot pounds. And I think the reason for that is because of the long transfer port, which is located right here. That transfer, uh, transfer, air transfer port is about one and three inches long. Um, I'll go into more detail with that in a moment, but uh, let's go on to the trigger. The trigger uh, pulls between between five and seven pounds. It feels like a two-stage trigger. That's the first stage and the second stage but there are no adjustment, external adjustment screws. And when I had a quick peek at the trigger, through the trigger guard, that first stage is controlled mainly just by an ordinary spring. So in truth and in fact, it looks as though it's a single stage uh, trigger. I'm not sure if it can be adjusted, but uh, we'll take the gun down and have a look at it uh, in the next video. Um, the finish is excellent, there is, um, it's a matte black finish, um, there are no blemishes that I can see on it, now, of course there is some surface rust because it's, it's, it's an older model gun, uh, the checkering is superb and it's grippy on both sides, both on the pistol grip, if you can see there, and the forearm, right? It's very high quality work. It's diamond checkering, and you can see this is really quality stuff. Um, now, if you choose to put uh, a telescopic sight on this, they have supplied you with a scope stop, a steel scope stop there, which is quite sturdy. And you will need that because of the enormous recoil of this gun. At 50, at 50 pounds of cocking force that you need, um, it is really enormous. And uh, if you don't have that positive scope stop, uh, for sure it's going to throw the, the scope. And you'll need to have a real um, scope that can take both the backward and forward recoil of these spring, spring guns. This gun comes with open sights. It's uh, fiber optic. The front one, if you can see, is red fiber optic. It's easy to see. Uh, the gun goes easily to your shoulder and it's easily to acquire the target using this uh, red fiber optic front sight. The back uh, sight it's also fiber optic, which is green. And if you look closely, you will see the markings there uh, for the uh, lateral movement, for the windage movement, sorry. Uh, the vertical uh, adjustment uh, is on the other side. 
you can see the markings. Now the adjustment goes with definitive clicks so you can tell exactly how far you're going when you're adjusting that. Now it's a bit cumbersome if you're going in the field, it means that you will have to have a screwdriver to adjust the elevation. Most of the time it's just elevation you'll, you'll want to adjust. I much prefer the older models like the Dianas which had a sliding um, adjustment for elevation which when you're in the field you can quickly slide up and down to adjust while you're hunting in a hunting situation. Because of the weight of this gun, I would suggest you put a sling on it, number one, and also use a shooting stick. Because after a while, taking a 10 pound gun, 10 pound plus, depending on the scoop that you put on, it becomes pretty heavy. Now, some of the unique, one of the unique feature of this gun is um, this loading port. It is opened by, it is spring-loaded, you pull that and it pivots to the left and opens the port for you to load your pellet in. It is quite a large port that you can actually get your finger in. So this is basically for a right-handed shooter. For a left-handed shooter, it'll be a bit more cumbersome unless he uses his right hand, right? There is a raised cheek piece on the right hand side, which shows that it was made for uh, a right-handed shooter, but it's fully ambidextrous otherwise. Uh, now, with this loading port, you can see it's quite long, as I said before, it's one inch, one and three inch inches long. And because of the length of that air transfer port, uh, you will lose a lot of the power. So even though it's, uh, it takes you 50 pounds to cock this rifle, a lot of the power will be lost with that long, pushing the, the air through the, that long transfer port to push the pellet out. Um, it is, the actual connection is a pin I don't know if you can see it here. Uh, I don't know. Let me see if I can get it for you guys. Uh, there's a pin. I think you can see it right on the side there. And what happens, there's a corresponding hole on the other side. So as you pull this spring-loaded lever back, bring it down and it engages. It's pretty sturdy. Now, one of the drawbacks of this also is that because of this configuration, they had to put two breech seals, one on either side of the loading port. There's one on this side and one on the other side. So if these go bad, you will lose some power out of this. Right now, I took a, uh, a quick look at one of them and the seam. This particular one right at the breech seems to be flattened, so we could be losing some power out of that. Uh, having said that, uh, this was designed for safety so that you can, wouldn't be able to, even though you cock the gun, uh, you can load this port at any time, whether you cock it or not. And uh, with other underlever um, designs, you have to be careful. They put a, an anti-bear trap mechanism in there to protect your hand. Make sure that it doesn't slip and cut your fingers off. Because with the other designs, the actual piston moves right up to the breech. So in this design, it's made for safety, number one. But in spite of that, um, they claim that it's an anti-bear trap. But in actual fact, it's an automatic safety that comes on, and maybe they're claiming that that is, that is the anti-bear trap. Now, you can decock what I found that you can, uh, there's some other reviews that I saw online which says that you cannot decock the gun. Now that is true if once the safety is engaged, 
But to decock it, you have to cock the gun all the way down. That is decocked. I mean, sorry, that is cocked. And you can see just under here, ahead of the trigger, that's a safe, that is your safety, okay? Now, to decock it, what you do, you release the safety, you keep your hand on the, on the lever, get a firm grip of it. You release the safety, right? As a matter of fact, you do it this way. You release the safety. You pull it back down. Once you hear that click, you know the safety is engaged again. Okay, so you right at that point where you feel that just before you keep your hand on it because it's going to kick. And you pull the trigger. So you can actually decock the gun that way. I would advise you to do it that many times because it, there may be some friction in that safety mechanism inside there because you could hear a definite click when you when you did that, right? Uh, but if you have to, uh, in a crunch, you can do it. Other than that, don't keep a pellet in it more than an hour. Fire it off, not in the air, but into the ground. Uh, the on the lever snaps shut. There is a it's a, a ball bearing. Uh, what can I show you that there? There's the ball bearing, and there is a chiseled detent on the other side here, right there, to help the bearing, the ball bearing, spring loaded, to go in there goes in with a definitive click. Right? There's no way to adjust the spring tension, but so far this has not come out. I don't know uh, in firing it uh, if it will come out. So what else is there? We've covered safety, we've covered that. Um, now this comes to the end of this video.